Hey there, Commercial Construction Coffee Talk fans. Thanks for chiming in. My name's David Corson. I'm your host. I'm also the publisher and editor of Commercial Construction and Renovation Magazine. This is what it used to look like when we were printing it. I uh, went digital of uh, August 2021. That was my last issue when I had White Castle on cover. But this is, I'm uh, pulling the archives out. November, December 2014, Rockbridge, their uh, hoteliers and hotel management. Uh, and uh, Mr. Cooper here, he's on my board. And uh, uh, this was a great looking issue. I always like looking to see this was, uh, let's see, how many pages was this? This was 148 pages. And uh, oh, wow. Let's see where I'm at. I'm, in, I'm on Broad Street in Philadelphia. Nice. Uh, we had our retreat, and I'm sitting there right in front of uh, City Hall there. For those of you who are uh, familiar with, uh, I'm, I'm from Philadelphia, that's my hometown yeah. right outside. But anyway, that's where I'm, I'm right there on Broad Street in front of City Hall. So yeah. uh, this was, uh, I little, had a little more hair there, and uh, I was a little more brown too. I've got the, the gray going on here these days. So, uh, But it's always nice to hold the magazine and, uh, you know, in my hands, but uh don't miss the printer. Don't miss the, you know, uh, the post office and being digital is an amazing ride. All you out there, you know, had another uh, awesome month uh, in January to start the year. We're uh, kicking tail again here in February with our visits and unique users. So appreciate everybody out there finding us on the web and on Google and uh, couldn't, couldn't have gotten to where we are without you. So thank you so much. Um, today, I have a nice gentleman in the great state of uh, Delaware. Fighting Blue Hands, uh, awesome lacrosse team. Uh, his name is uh, his name is uh, John Bordernaro. Did I get it right? Yeah, very good. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, he's with the uh, Construction Insurance Risk Education, and uh, he uh, teaches people about insurance, and he's got a course. So, John, say hello from Delaware. Hello so from Delaware. Right there. Yeah. How are you doing? How are you doing? And uh, where are you in Delaware? Are you on the coast? Are you in Central? New York? So in the, the Delaware is kind of like any small town in, in the world, right? Um, so I'm in a beautiful downtown Hokesson, Delaware, which is just outside of Wilmington. So I was going to say right now, if you went back up to Philadelphia and try to take your picture outside of City Hall, they might throw stuff at you. So it's it's um, it was good you yeah. did it several years back. Yeah, one of my good buds from prep school was uh, out of Wilmington, and uh, uh, they had a big distribution uh, uh, gig mm -hmm. going on for all like uh, you know they did. Uh, dental floss and you know everything that went into the drugstores or whatever yep. so my buddy's from wilmington and uh so very familiar with Wil wilmington newark rehoboth beach and yep. probably i know where you're at i mean it's not yeah. a big state you know no, it's, it's uh, right down 95 one end of the other yeah you, yeah you're driving in delaware for more than two hours you're not in delaware anymore yeah rehoboth beach though is an awesome yep. place i mean yep. it's just really really nice and uh yep. if you haven't been out to the believe it or not delaware's got really nice beaches so if you never check out rehoboth really yep. really cool beach town Yep. So. Yep. Cool. Yeah. So uh, before we get started on your story, I do have a sponsor. Okay. Uh, it's called Magic Mind, and uh, it's basically uh, it replaces all of uh, the energy drinks that are out there because they're full of caffeine, and this is this is made out of twelve natural ingredients, and it doesn't give you that uh, kind of caffeine buzz or jitteriness. And uh, they reached out to me, so I got bought some bottles it takes a couple days for you to affect but it basically makes you very uh makes you think clear uh it makes you uh it doesn't give you that jittery but you're awake and um in, in all aspects of your mindset and thinking and all of those things it, it's an amazing thing and uh you can take most of it some people take uh uh most of it in the morning myself uh if i need a little boost i leave i take probably three quarters of it or so. And then in the afternoon, if I need a little boost, I take it. But uh, uh, it's a really cool thing. Uh, what I'll do is I'll put, if anybody wants to try it, uh, I do have a discount code. I'll put it in my description uh, uh, in the in our, in our link. And uh, But the, it's a discount 20, I think is my code, okay. but I'll put it in there. And if anybody wants to try it, you know, if you're drinking coffee, which I don't drink, I just take my little, my, my vitamins in the morning. Uh, this is a really nice thing to get, you know, get you off caffeine and you don't get that, uh, uh, you don't get that thing, and you don't it takes off the stress. And it's all natural, and it's amazing. So check out Magic Mind. Uh, so John, yes sir. The the way it's gonna work, you know, we'll do. You know, like I said, we're gonna do it in three stories. You're gonna tell your story, where you grew up, where you went to school, how you end up where you work today. Then we're gonna talk about lessons learned over the last three years, and any new insurance uh, things that uh, uh, new products or uh, that our listeners out there in commercial construction coffee talk should know about. 
and then you'll leave one positive thought or phrase in your contact info. So with that said, the floor is yours. Tell us your story. So I grew up in a beautiful Western North Carolina, a small town called Brevard, North Carolina, where I believe everybody in the world should go to at least once and visit it because, um, as we like to say in North Carolina, God is a tar heel because the sky is Carolina blue. Uh, it was a wonderful place to grow up. My father worked for DuPont. My sisters worked for DuPont. Everybody in my family worked for DuPont but me. So I swore that I would never work for DuPont. Uh, and my mom would say that be careful with the word never because it turns out to be a very short period of time. So after I went to Georgia Tech to become an engineer, I eventually ended up working for DuPont um, and got into their construction business. So for the last several years, I've been working with the Tyvek business. I've been helping the, uh, the distributors of Tyvek get out there and do their thing. Um, and, and the main selling process with Tyvek is all around education. Um, so they, they are, they're out there every day. The, the specialists are out there teaching installers about how to install the product correctly and why. Um, and, and teaching them the why is is really important to, to make sure that these products are are, are done correctly so they, they do their job. Um, during that process, I became involved with the National Association of Home Builders. I'm on was on several committees with them, and I met a gentleman who started this part of it. He's in insurance from the insurance side of the business. So Tracy Durafeld been in insurance forever uh, on on that side of the business, and we had a mutual need and understanding of helping to get education about you know construction risk and risk management. Uh, and we realized that there really wasn't um, an, an easy way to get that education system to a lot of people other than trying to you know have a class you know have a dinner dine a meet and, uh, meet and greet kind of a thing and getting a little bit of education out there so over the last several years we've put together an online based product where you can get up to 25 hours of really good conversational insurance education um, it, it's an online class you can do it at your at your leisure it was originally designed really for the insurance agents. But we also realize at the same time that the people who are buying the insurance don't understand the concepts as well as they should. And to make a better decision, you need to be a better buyer. You need to know more about it. So that's really why the the, the whole process, the whole education model that we've got is really aimed both at the contractor and the agent. So that, that's where we're at. Um, you got any questions about it? I can go through the courses, but we can send you the uh, web. No, hey, listen. You know, we were talking before, like you said. You know, I'm I'm looking at. We had uh, I I need building wrap on my home that that we're going to start building here. You know, in about you right. know, five or six weeks. So that was a budget line item on there. Are we going to use Tyvek? Are we going to use someone else's? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, you know, having that wrap and just you know just in, insurance in general. Uh, in yep. the bill, it doesn't matter if you're doing residential or commercial. The more you know, the better off you're going to be. I mean, that, yep. it, knowledge is power. So, any kind of education where if if you if you think you know something, and taking more classes, even if you don't, you're just going to be better off there. Am I right? I mean, that's absolutely. And, and so we'll you, have certain, you have all sorts of people that take your classes. People that are novices to to experts, right? Look, absolutely. We we find out that. It's kind of funny, but and I see it all the time is where the insurance agent and the the contractor are going to use the same word, but they mean different things to each other. Um, so it's important that everybody understands what language the other person is using and, and what the words mean to them. But it's it's just basic. Some of it's really basic stuff. Some of it gets into more detailed stuff, like when do you need you know director's insurance, directors and officers insurance. When do you need that? Why do you need that? Um, what about pollution? The one of the big topics that came up over the last several years was cyber. Uh, as we go to more and more smart houses, who owns that data and when? Uh, so if you buy a house and you got all these smart gadgets in it, got Alexa for this or whatever, your smart thermostats, your all your little smart devices, uh, where's that data going? And and is it protected? And and do you, do you need to know about it? Is there is there a liability there as well? Um, maybe, uh, so, you know, it's just things to think about that, that, you know, 40 years ago when we were building houses, we didn't have to think about that, but now we do. Hey, 
listen, my phone listens to me. I can say one little word and I got a, I got a commercial yeah. or, or an ad popping up of, of, of what I said. So oh, it thinks that you're not getting, you know, I don't want to use the word spy, but it, you're being surveilled. Uh, your phone, Alexa, we've got Alexa at the house. Yeah. I mean, it's just, you, you you play with these things. And my wife and I'm like, oh my God, they just heard what we were saying. Yep. Look. And social media, everybody's on social media, which is a wonderful thing, but you need to understand as well that social media eavesdropping, listening to serve you better. Um, but, you know, understand, understand your risks there as well. Um, so that's, that's kind of where we're at, just helping contractors understand where their risks are and in risks in an area they may not even think about uh, and, and how to just so you can't mitigate a risk that you're not aware of. Uh, those yeah. are the ones that jump up and bite you, right? Um, and like we like to tell everybody that if you're getting to construction, it's not one of those things where are you going to get sued or if I'm going to get sued? No, it's just, it's more of a win. Somebody's going to, you know, that's that's unfortunately how America does business is eventually somebody going to get sued over something. Um, yeah. So my my just, my, fa my family's been in uh, construction since 1888. All right, and mm -hmm. uh, it's called Maripolic Steel. We're outside about 15 minutes outside of west of uh, Valley Forge. Okay. Anyway. Uh, when I grew up, uh, I got my license at 16. All the grant, all all the all the guys, everybody had to go work in the scrapyard. So if you wanted to get your license to drive, you had to go work in the scrapyard. So I was working on a job uh, outside of Philly on 95. We were knocking down these uh, big tanks, and uh, we had to knock down this building and take go in and, and knock all the asbestos off the pipes before we uh, demoed uh, and yep. took down the building. And uh, so. I'm in there, you know, it's it, it's summer, it's hot, you know, I'm in the white Tyvek suit, I yep. got the, on. you know, I was the, I was the yeah. hose guy, you know, put, putting the dust down, so yep. the asbestos crews come in, and, uh, the, you know, I'm looking, I'm like, yo, bro, man, you, you need to put your, you put your mask on, he's got, he's got it hanging on his, he's like, yeah. oh, no, nah, man, I don't need no stick him out, <laughs> and I thought his lung was gonna come out, you know, I'm like, yeah. I'm putting my mask on, you know, and uh, so, you know, I didn't even I didn't even think about it until yep. and I was just learning on the job. And uh, so uh, there are all of these, you know, with OSHA and all the regulations mm -hmm. and all that stuff about the construction site. You, you, you can always learn something. The day you stop learning is the day you should go stop. Do something else. Right. And, exactly. And I don't care how many stores you build. There's always going to be that thing like, God, I wish I would have thought of that, you know, or yep. or. Yeah. You know, you have that epiphany of, you yeah. know, a simple little thing and I didn't think of it, you know, yeah. right? Yeah. And and it's, they can be expensive lessons to learn. Um, with asbestos, you could, you know, you could learn with your life, but uh, mm -hmm. several companies have learned it the expensive way and, and hitting their pocketbooks with asbestos and how to, the problems that it can cause. Um, and product liability, construction liability, it varies so much state to state to state. The, for a person like you, a commercial contractor, you're not only just working in Georgia, you've got to work in Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland, and maybe Colorado and, and Texas. And every state has their own interpretation and, and their own liability and how they look at it. Um, you look at states like Florida, where in Florida and Pennsylvania, where the state's attorney general are looking at construction defects and with things like some of the asbest, not asbestos, the uh, less stucco problems. Um, there have been so many stucco problems that they're looking at that as fraud, not necessarily as just a construction liability, but as, as a fraud where the builder is defrauding their customer by not building it correctly so it's, it lasts. So it's lawyers are turning the litigation into a, a revenue stream. And, yeah. and that's that's dangerous. Well, you know, what's funny is when I look back, because I, I grew up down and down and playing in the steel yard and went with mm -hmm. the cranes and all that. And, you know, they didn't wear seat belts. People put baby oil on, yeah. uh, you, know, you know, smoking cigarettes. And, you know, I look back yep. where I grew up, you know, I was, you know, listen, I just turned 60. Do the math. You can find yep. out when I was born. Yep. And uh, anyway, but you can look at it. And as I venture now to where I am today. Uh, just being insurance in general is going in so many different directions, but with the construction aspect, it's, 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 it's just worked in such an amazing industry, but where safety is, is, is the, the biggest thing. We want everybody to get home at night and be safe. And, uh, 
Uh, and, and that could be with anything, you know, yeah. that happens on the site. But when you look back, they were still building things back there. And mm-hmm. some of those buildings were built great, but was it a safe way to do it? Oh, I don't know. You know, it, yeah. uh, it, uh, I, I, I'm a, I became a digital guy, so I have my, my uh, I have a Facebook page. Uh, it's it's faceless. Uh, it's called the Blueprint Buzz, the do's and don'ts of construction. Yep. So I put I put stuff up there that's hey, this is the right way to uh, you know install a metal roof, or this mm-hmm. is not the way that you want to do it. And I get some videos, and I get some people you know in ouching you know oh that looked like it hurt, but yep. uh, it it really it really has when you look at construction, it hasn't yep. changed that much. But it's just the a lot of the legalese and the paperwork yep. and yep. just the permitting process and all of that, that I wish they would just put it to make it, you know, where a third grader could read it and understand yep. it. Yeah. And, and, and that was one of the great things about working for DuPont was DuPont, I, I guess their, their story is when you start your life as a gunpowder manufacturer, there are no small accidents in gunpowder plants. It's uh, you have an accident, your plant goes away. So DuPont yeah. has installed the safety culture throughout uh, and, and for years and years and years, decades doing that, uh, where we used to you know, kid that you always tell the DuPont kids in the neighborhood because they were the ones out mowing the grass and were wearing safety glasses and gloves yeah. and long pants and sleeves. And the kids whose parents worked at the paper mill were out there in shorts and flip flops. Yeah. Um, but did, did we prevent injuries? I don't know, but it got the mindset to be safe and think about what could be a problem and, and get ahead of it. And um, that's, that's the main thing is like any kind of risk mitigation is think about what the problems, what the risks are and plan for them. And education is a great way to get there. What, uh, what, when you got out of Georgia tech and you went to work for DuPont, what division did you start at? I started, uh, it, I had a background for a while in, in textile processing. So I knew a lot about how to, dye and print fabrics uh and dupont was starting a, a business with digital printing on it directly printing to textiles uh and they were really good at, at the printing side of it and they were not so good but willing to learn about how to make the color stick and that's where i came in so i started with their their digital printing process um helped uh, i don't know if you've noticed but about 20 years ago we went from vinyl backgrounds to fabric backgrounds uh the next mm-hmm. step is going to be digital there's going to be screens oled screens or some kind of a, a video type screen out there but that happened very very quickly um so now you see all the wave banners when you're driving up and down the road uh, i would say most state flags are digitally printed now uh, most trade show backdrops are all fabrics that are yeah, stretched. Fabric stretch. they, don't, mm-hmm. yeah, they don't break and they don't bend and you, you, if they get dirty you wash them it's great uh, so I was in that industry for a long time until, uh, oh, you remember back around 2010, we had that slight hiccup in the economy and um, and basically uh, people quit buying stuff. Um, so DuPont went through a little reorganization and I ended up in the construction side of it. Um, and that's that's one nice thing about DuPont. They kept recycling their people. So I, I ended up in construction in Tyvek uh, and then that lasted until um, – what was that thing we had a couple of years back? I can't remember the name of it. It had some number, a couple of letters and a couple of numbers, and that kind of um, forced another reorganization kind of thing. And, and at that point, yeah. I I also had to change the uh, color of my hair on my driver's license. I was no longer brown. I was informed. I was uh, another color, yeah. another color. So uh, yeah, um, I another recreation coming out and doing this with uh, with Sire with with Tracy. Good timing. I actually I applied I applied, I applied to work for DuPont uh, when I got out of school and I came back east and uh, um, and when I started my publishing career I started on a, a automotive interiors magazine and okay. uh, I used to call on DuPont the filament division uh, yep. you know for you know whether it was headliners or the yep. seats or and, and uh, they were one of our clients I, Amico was another one you know all yep. those guys did the filaments and stuff yep. but it was amazing but they were it was it was the textile division yep. so. Yeah. So we used to call on all, you know, all those guys. So when you said textiles, like, oh, that's bringing back memories and stuff. Yeah, know? this uh, it was uh, that was uh, when we talk about downturns in the economy. If you were working in the United States textile industry, it just it left the hemisphere. It's it's uh, there are a few mills left, but before when you could talk to twenty guys making blue jeans, now there's like one. Yeah, yeah. No, so, well, look, I'm a, you know, as you know, textile land is right up here in Spartanburg across mm-hmm. the. Uh, Georgia, yep. you know, uh, yep. 
Carolina border and, uh, you know, as well as up uh, towards Chattanooga, but, you know, carpet land. Yep. Up in Baldwin. But, um, uh, yeah, you know, my family was in upholstery manufacturing in North Carolina. So we had a plant okay. in uh, Hickory and uh, we used to do the, uh, you know, the high point market and uh, all those fabrics and so forth. Uh, I remember I did my retail training at Levitt's Furniture when I got yeah. out of school. So you and, remember not only the, the upholstery, but the, the furniture itself was all made in between North Carolina and South Carolina. So High Point was the halfway point between New York and Miami. And that's why they put the market there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, when it came, you know, when it came time for me to go work in the plant, uh, I was going to go to Hickory. I think they had one hotel, and, uh, one restaurant, and it was the middle of the 80s and the recession and 18 percent interest rates. And I just said, I just don't know if furniture is my bag, you know, and uh, I uh, and but it were, uh, you know, I grew up with upholstery. You know, yep. but, but we were known, of course, in furniture industries, uh, we were known for fine craftsmanship. And, okay. uh, uh, you know, some of the furniture that it's built today is junk. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you just look at it, it, like, it, it, it but it's, it's just not. Blue. Yeah. My uh, my sister, uh, uh, her, her boyfriend, they were, they're on Long Island and he was doing a job and he saw a uh, Crestline furniture chair this this lady had. And it had to be 50, 60 years old. And it was still looked like it was brand new. Fabric yeah. had never been changed. And obviously, you know, if you maintain your stuff, it'll last longer with anything. But uh, we were known for fine craftsmanship. And uh, I remember going into the plant and seeing these guys, you know, it was all about volume and this and that. And, you know, watching them, you know, build a, a sofa or a love seat or a chaise, whatever it might be. And uh, they, man, they were awesome. I mean, it was yeah. just, yeah, it, it was an art. It's, they were artists, you know, they put it on the thing, they wing it around, they got yeah. the gun, or they're putting the rivets in, you know, I mean, it was, it was awesome. See, it's not done like that anymore. I mean, no, it's just, it's, um, it's cabinets we still make in the United States pretty much, but furniture, not as much at all anymore. There's, yeah. there's a few really high end guys that are making stuff, but they're, they're very much niche markets. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's you know we where we live as you as you remember it's kind of near the Amish world and the mm -hmm. Amish furniture makers are basically what's left. Um, but they 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 work pretty much in oak and they, yeah. they like their oak. They they might do a little bit of maple if, if they like you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's talk about March of 2020. Here we are, almost in March of 2024, four years later. Mm -hmm. uh, no one, everybody's kind of been on that roller coaster. You know, I think I've gotten yeah. off. I think I've gotten off, but I'm back on now. I'm back off. I don't know. You know, I'm in limbo. Yes. Uh, yeah. But it's been, you know, but talk about, you know, lessons learned, you know, over the last couple of years and, you know, any of the, any new services or so forth that our listeners out there, commercial construction coffee talk should, you know, be aware of. Yep. So I think one of the big things that came out of the, uh, the roller coaster is, the uh, the adoption of really of, of this kind of of video conferencing kind of work where before it was like yeah well that kind of works in the main office and it's just if you if new york wants to talk to munich that's how they do it but now it's it's everybody doing it and, and i think that's here to stay uh, and i think it's a good thing i think it allows us to communicate quickly uh, across a multiple time zones and, and still see face to face i i think in person is still the absolute best way to meet with people, but this is getting much, much better. People are getting more and more adopted to it. I know some of the uh, social organizations that I'm with that some of the members are are older. So it allows them to have, if they want to do a meeting at night, they don't want to get out and drive at night, but they'll do a Zoom meeting. Uh, so mm -hmm. that, that's fantastic. So it's it's helping worlds get bigger again, which was kind of nice because the roller coaster made worlds smaller. And now people are getting out and they're comfortable with it this way. Okay. Eventually let's go out. Let's go to churches and parks and, and concerts and ball games again, but let's start taking those steps. Let's keep moving forward. Um, because if you, if you stop, you know, you're a hockey player. If you stop moving forward, somebody's going to hit you. So yeah. Absolutely. You down. Yeah. You got to keep your head up. There's some big boys yep. out there. that want to take yep. your head off. So, yep. you know, uh, yep. what about, uh, you know, what about, uh, how is AI? Has AI affected, uh, you know, the insurance sector at all? I mean, you know, we were talking about cyber and that's kind of an, in that digital yeah. area, though, you know, but AI is the rage. Uh, yeah. it, it, it's going, it's got its tentacles, you know, in every sector of the planet. Talk about yeah, AI. I would say 
as far as you know doing the writing side of it um a lot of that anything you see this boilerplate written is going to go ai sooner rather than later I, I, i'm a firm believer in that because i i, I guess that's what it's there for um I, I don't see AI yet being truly creative. It's it's recreative, but it doesn't create. Um, it, it's getting better at an alarmingly rapid pace. So I don't think we're that far away from it. Um, I am not afraid of that robot uprising and, and becoming part of the, 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 the matrix anytime soon. Uh, my yeah. grandchildren might have to worry about that, but I don't think I have to worry about that. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I, I listen, I use AI. I still I still write my own column. My my yeah. editor, he'll go in and edit it. And uh, uh, we like it, you know, but it, it's a tool, you know, uh, you have to you have to teach it. Uh, you know, I become a prompt programmer. For those of you who don't know what that is, that's an AI term. You have to you, you know, I'm, my wife laughs at me because when I go into it's basically my assistant. If I go into chat GBT, <laughs> how are you doing today? Are you feeling OK? I know that you're the best. Uh, you know, copywriter that there is. Here, here's what I want to do. I, I need this title to be shortened into, you know, 60 font, you know, ver characters versus 110, so I could keep going. What? Mm -hmm. So, you know, so it's a tool, but yep. you have to you have to program it to the way exactly. that you're thinking, and uh, you just can't take AI and and oh, there, there's my book because it it doesn't have a it doesn't have a it doesn't have charisma. It doesn't have right. that. It's flat. It's flat. It's dry. And uh, you're you're gonna have to massage yeah. it in order to yeah. you know use it. But it's an it's an unbelievable tool. I had a, there was an economist that I was uh, uh, listening to the other day, and he said, you know, without AI over the last well, I'm gonna say the last 18 months or so, two years, mm -hmm. that without AI the economy wouldn't have been that great. But AI has really really improved the speed of of business in general. That yeah. it's helped helped us you know you know have have you know have growth or whatever uh, but it without it we probably wouldn't be in that good of shape and i'm um, not a doggy down or a poo pooer yeah. but he, he made his point very crystal that people yeah. using ai and every day more and more people get used to it and they use it more that it's 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 not refining business it's just it's a catalyst in yeah, getting exactly done. yeah it, it's, it's, a, it's a great tool you look at it in construction you went from hammers to the nail guns um so it allows you to put more nails in faster. So Absolutely. that's kind of what AI is. It's a tool like that. It allows you to do that, whether it's creating text faster. Uh, but again, you still need to have the, the knowledge behind it. To, otherwise, you end up just, it, you get nails in wherever. Uh, you, you're not getting the, the the liveliness, the artistic side of it. I, I don't think AI is quite there for that yet. Um you know, you look at the old architect, you look at the old, uh, the Italian masters, the marble sculptures. That is, that's, that's amazing stuff. I don't see AI being able to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, talk about risk education and, you know, where it is today and where you see it, you know, the next five or 10 years, you know, down the road. So I, I think risk education is going to become more and more important to the buyer side of it, because as insurance rates are, they pretty much only going to go in one direction, I, I believe. Um, uh, I, I was talking uh, with some people this morning and, uh, you know, homeowners insurance rates are in North Carolina were going up 48 percent because of storms. Um, so. There is some uh, thought going on that, you know, all the all the advances we've done in building codes to make houses built better they ought to last better so there's some some interesting stuff going on to see whether that can help with that that cost increase um i don't know it's early stages on that um but realistically you know you gotta to learn uh, i think back of you remember the uh, i don't remember the name of the hurricane but it hit uh, mexico florida and devastated except for one house. There was one house right in the middle of where it hit that was largely untouched. And, and the story behind that was this, that gentleman had built his house to Cat 5 hurricane standards because they were brand new and he figured, okay, we'll do it. It, it wasn't that big of a, of, a, of a delta in his cost at the point, at that mm -hmm. point, because he was building a very nice house. So it was a little bit more, but it wasn't that much more. And 
then, you know, two years after he was done, a Cat 5 hurricane hit, and boom, it worked. And everything else was just gone. I mean, scraped sand around him. But his house was largely un untouched. There was a few, few shingles hit here and there missing. But, you know, as opposed to having his house missing, that was a much better thing. I, I think that kind of an effort is going to pay off. Uh, Florida has done tremendous strides in their in their building codes in their wind zones. Um, and I see that extending throughout the Gulf region for, for that category. Um, not necessarily because we're going to get more more storms or more severe storms, but they're going to hit. I mean, we we have a history of having hurricanes hit our coastline, so why not prepare for it? We know how to do it. Let's do it. Yeah, my thing with the hurricanes when they come in, uh, the one that just hit that went through uh, Fort Myers and um, lost its hit, but the the homes that were, it was wind and it was it was flood. It was both. Yep. yep. So if you were really close to the beach, you didn't really, you know, you were going to get, you were going to get whacked. Yeah. But as you got in there, the older homes did not do as well as the newer, the newer stuff. homes yeah. did. Yeah. But once again, in Florida, there's, you know, there's no basements. The water, there's the water tables there. Yeah. So uh, my thing is, you know, just like in New Jersey, if you build a house down in Margate or yeah. uh, Cape May or what, you know, yeah. whatever, it, it, they all have to be raised now. Yep. So so my thing is, to that. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, it's it's like my in-laws. They they they're over in Hilton Head. Everybody's got their you know cars underneath. You know, they're yep. up, and if the yep. storm surge comes in, you know that can get flooded. It's not a big deal, but uh, that's my biggest my my peeve is is that when these disasters happen, and and for the construction industry, it, it's a positive because someone's going to have to go rebuild all that stuff, and hopefully they'll put in some new ingenuity or mm -hmm. new types of products, but that. You should be able to, to build it, but the insurance cost is one of the major factors. If yes. you, you know, like it, like Wrightsville Beach in 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 North Carolina, beautiful, right. or Wilmington in North Carolina, on, on the coast there, it's out there on the tip. That's where the storms always you know nip it, yep. and uh, that you know, can I can I I can build a house, but can I afford the insurance to cover the cost right. of it? Right, and if you're right. building to a code to to that's designed to withstand those storms shouldn't that be reflected in your insurance cost because the insurance is, is really you're you're trying to to prepay for damage but if you're if you're mitigating the the risk by building it better shouldn't that be also understood in your insurance rates right i mean you're, you're spending the extra money up front to build the home to withstand a storm so if you hit get hit by that storm you should be there you know, you know, when storms come in, it, it, it's kind of a catch-22 because all the damage there, someone's going to have to go rebuild it, and it's good for the construction industry, and hopefully they can implement new materials and ways that they build. But you think that if you if you built a house that had better materials that could withstand the wind right. and, and the house is built up so it doesn't get flooded and so forth, that your insurance cost would be less versus just going up and up, right? Exactly. You would, you would think, and, and there is – some work being done at the national level to capture that, that, that we're building houses both in hurricane zones and storm zones and, and really across the country that are more resilient. So there they're should last longer. We, we, we learned a lot over the last several years. And, and if the builders are being required by the codes to build a net zero energy house that's going to last 100 years, shouldn't the insurance capture that extra value as well? And and, and Right now, basically, home insurance is how many square feet you got, what's the construction type, here's your number. Doesn't, doesn't really look at, was it built in 1970 or was it built in 2023? And, mm -hmm. and it does not, does not take any of that into consideration. Um, so that's, that's, that's I think, upcoming. And, and, and the people like Tracy are working on that to, 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 to go through the actuarial studies and find out that, yeah, there is a difference. And, and there should be different rates. Yeah. Talk about the commercial sector. I mean, are, are there any, uh, you know, I mean, we've been talking kind of residential here yep. with the on the insurance side, but talk about the commercial side and what people mean, maybe if they're thinking about doing a development or if they're going to rehab an old store and redo it, you know, what should they look for? And 
and obviously insurance is a cost that they've got to deal with Absolutely. just like their does. So, and, and with any cost, you need to know what you're buying, right? So uh, whether on the commercial side, whether you're building like a multifamily or rehabbing a multifamily or, or a hotel or hospitality or a hospital or anything, it, it, it's still the bait. You still do the same essential construction activities, right? It's just the end use may be slightly different, um, but every one of them has their own little categories where they, you, you, you get the gotchas. Uh, condos. Ooh, condos are so much fun because who owns a condo? Um, yeah. How do you, you know, that's, that's, uh, if you looked at the condo boom and then bus cycle, it was really more driven by insurance costs than anything else. Um, because once the condo got turned over to the condo association, um, you're, it's being run by a lot of folks with a lot of good intentions, but have no idea how to run a condo association. Typically, um, some of them are great. Some of them are not so great. Um, but you, you can't defer maintenance forever. Yeah. So yeah, listen, anything listen maintenance is a is another factor i mean yeah. when you look at a, a a store and looking at my finger the tip of your finger is basically the construction process and yeah. the rest of that's just maintenance and the yeah. better it better that you maintain or keep your facility uh looking good yep. and so forth the longer it's going to last but yep. obviously every three to five years retailers they come out with a new prototype and yep. and you got old stores that are dog stores and the new ones and mm -hmm. Uh, so I don't, I don't buy in it. I don't buy in it. All the other stuff, you know, it's funny. Like when um, in the new, in the, if you read the newspapers these days, which, you know, I haven't looked at one forever, but the bottom line is if they have a store, oh, so-and-so is going to close 20 stores, but then they yep. say, yeah, they're building 10, 10 nice ones, you know, yep. and those other 10 stores, someone else is going to take those. They're going to, yep. they're going to renovate them, put their own. Do something, put something. Yeah, exactly. And uh, so, uh, you know, sometimes it, yeah, it, it gets worse before it gets better. Yep. You know, like right now with the commercial real estate occupancy rate in, in the United States, that's a that's a looming uh, powder keg, and who knows what's going to happen with. But right. that occupancy, something's going to have to be done. When someone's going to be, you know, that that that's whoever can figure out what they can do with that space yep. is going to be a billionaire. Yeah, you know? Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, because people are by now uh, after the roller coaster ride, it, the people who are going to, who are willing to go back to offices have gone back to offices pretty much. Um, yeah. Others have reinvented themselves or, or the, the whole remote working is going to stay with us for as long as it, it can. And having worked remotely, basically my entire career, I'm in very much in favor of remote working. Um, I, I go, I haven't, I guess I haven't had an office to go to probably in 20 years. So I'm okay with that. It, it's, it's fine. Um, I have a and, laptop. I can work. Yeah. I started my. I left Nielsen in 2001, December 17th. I went out yep. on my own, and I had an office. I had 14 employees and all that, and four magazines, and uh, and then the uh, construction uh, uh, fell off the cliff in 08 into 10, yep. and uh, and then I started, you know, working out of my house. If I had to do it over, I totally would have worked out of my house because yep. everybody's virtual. No one yep. ever, no one ever comes to see me at my office, and yep. Uh, when I had it and uh, and some people have they have to be in an office others don't yep. and yep. the biggest thing is is that uh, people now that they've proven themselves that they can work away from home yep. they want to go to the beach they want to go to uh, the, the ball game they want to go to a you know a concert or whatever yep. but they don't want to go back to the office yep. and, uh, yep. and and that's and that's the thing as a business owner if you're owning a company you want to have your company culture but you don't want to you don't want to have to offshore things and you want to keep her, you know, so that it's that hybrid schedule and yep. how far do you go? And I listen, I don't I, I don't wish any of that because I know it keeps a lot of people up at, up yep. at night. Yep. Uh, and uh, I mean, look at look at DuPont. I mean, Wilmington's yep. the whole thing is DuPont, you know, every, every yep. you know, the whole city yep. is right. How, it, so. Well, I would say it used to be it's 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 not as much anymore, but um, yeah, and they're, they're struggling with it, too. There There are. People who are fighting to stay home as long as they possibly can, and yeah. if you're in an, in an, uh, an environment where face-to-face -face collaboration, design work uh, with architects, or even that that's that's really good. Um, you know, I, I look at uh, some friends I have who, who work for uh, Clark Construction. They're very collaborative, uh, so them going back to the office makes a lot of sense. Some mm -hmm. companies just aren't collaborative; they're just a bunch of um, a friend of mine works for a, a broker business and they have an office. And I go like, why do you have an office? I mean, you have well, some of the guys like to have coffee talk with each other. So they, okay. But basically you need a phone and a laptop and you can do that from the basement. 
So yeah. Okay. So I see that. Yeah. There, but there's a lot of office space that's that's available that that can be done something with. Yeah. And yeah, you're like right. I said, figures it out. Yeah. yeah. Whoever whoever's out there and you're thinking about it, uh, you, whoever figures that that magic uh, answer is just going to be an unbelievably successful person. So. Yep. Uh, yep. Um, Remember, I said that to you all out there on Commercial yes. Construction Coffee Talk. I get a nickel on that. Yeah. yeah. You know, let me know. We can write about it, too. You know, we'll, yeah. we'll put that one in the magazine. So yeah. so listen, everybody out there on Commercial Construction Coffee Talk, if you're doing a, you know, you're doing a new build or you're doing a renovation project and you're thinking that, you know, you know what do I what, what should I do about insurance or coverage or surety or any of that kind of stuff? This gentleman right here is a well, you know, a, you know, just a. a chock full of knowledge and, and all the courses that he has. So if someone wanted to, you know, reach out to you, John, and yep. talk about Sire or, or, you know, what avenues that they, yep. they think that you should investigate, how would they connect with you? So the easiest way by email is John B, because no one can spell my last name, but John B at sirelearning.org is, is the quick way to get to me. Um, and, and I'll give you that link as well. Yeah, and you're on LinkedIn too, right? I'm I think on LinkedIn, all over LinkedIn. Up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's yeah. the place to be. You got, you know, as far as I'm concerned, LinkedIn is uh, that's the that's the platform you want to be in. What do they call it, that? That's that's Facebook for adults. Yeah, you know, it uh, LinkedIn. It's just uh, it it's just uh, it's an amazing platform. Uh, yeah, you know. it's it's done it's it's done it well. Yeah, although yeah. it has this weird corner as well, but it's it's for the most part, uh, it's got some amazing functionality to it. It's it's a good service. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So once again, if you're out there and you're thinking about it, don't hesitate. Email them, find them on LinkedIn, bounce some questions off you. The, 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 you can take the courses uh, on your own time and finish them. To, and once everybody takes the course, do, do they get a certificate or do there they is get a SIRE certificate that you get? Um, um, it's it allows you and plus it allows you to to move along um, in, in your, edu your professional education. Um, we're working to get that to count as your professional education courses certification for, for an insurance agent. Um, but yeah, you can become SIRE certified. Um, SIRE certified. There you go. SIRE certified. And you put that logo on your digital business card. Yep. And people will there know what go. it means. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, as we wrap up here, if uh, you wanted to leave one positive thought or phrase with our uh, audience as we're finishing up you know look q q1 is almost over you got a month left and we're going into the springtime at least yep. here down here in the south um what thought would you leave or phrase with our listeners out there i think it's it is to me it's you have to keep your positive thinking going there is enough noise in this world uh i tell my wife that you don't need to listen to the news all day long long every day it's it's really 10 minutes 15 minutes is probably all you need to know to see what's going on after that they're just yelling at each other so and i don't yeah. care which side you look at whether it's the the right side the blue side or the red side it's it's the same thing they're just yelling at each other so keep moving forward uh yeah. i just can't emphasize, emphasize that enough just keep moving forward it's not as bad as the people on tv want to tell you to be it's it we are still a great country let's keep moving forward yeah. Yeah. Listen, uh, as, a, as, an, as a lacrosse player, or hockey player, always be moving forward, even though I can skate backwards and yeah. run backwards if I need to. You, you just want to be moving forward, yeah. whatever you're doing in business, yep. whatever it is, move forward, keep your blinders on. Yep. There's a lot of it you can't control. Yep. You just got to, you know, stay focused and, and, and do the best that you can every day. And, yeah. you know, uh, I, I nurture. I have, I have a. I have another page. My digital one. I, I nurture it every night with quotes and stuff. I just put one up the other night, and and it just said, "Unthink it." You know, don't make it. Don't make it so complex. Keep it simple. Yeah. I mean, and, Nike, uh, Nike did a good job. Just do it. Yeah, absolutely. So as we wrap up here, uh, a couple of things. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, uh, be safe on the construction site. We want everybody to get home. All right. We want yeah. you to be able to go see your kids, your wife, your partner, whatever you know, relax, catch some Z's and be able to do it again, you know, the mm -hmm. next day. Number two, stay hydrated on the on the construction site. I can tell you, you know, if you don't drink, you know, even though it's still kind of wintery, old man winter, depending on where you are in the uh, country, you're going to get that, you know, you got to stay hydrated, whether it's cold or hot, because if you don't stay hydrated as an athlete, I can say you get headaches and that's when you get hurt. And uh, so be safe on the site and 
make sure you stay hydrated. Number three, we want you to hit that like button. Okay, become one of my followers or subscriber on uh, Commercial Construction Coffee Talk. And we want to get the word out about anybody that's, you know, building residential, commercial, whatever it might be. Codes change, new products come into play. You could get uh, SIRE certified and you, your project's going to go on over. You want to have that insurance thing. Oh, well, did I do it the right way? Did I get the right policy? Did I get the right writer? You know, enough, did, yes, yeah. I, I didn't understand what the underwriter was talking about. Did I buy too much or not enough? Yeah. Exactly. Knowledge is powers. And and you've got these courses, you can do them, you know, by yourself. So look John up, you know, and or look up, go go to the web and, and figure it out. Because like I said, the day you stop learning is the day you should go do something else. So mm -hmm. uh, so with that said, John, uh, you know, in, enjoy the uh, well, you know, listen, it's it's really nice here today. It gets a little chilly here at night, but, you know, mm -hmm. it, the trees are almost ready to bloom. And uh, it, it's just yep. crazy. That you know, pollen season's right on you. Everything turns yellow in a week. Yeah, you know, it, you know, a, April is green, and and you don't wash your car in in no. Georgia in in April. It's yeah, just I've got not a black uh, a black Explorer, and it's uh, we're probably May, but yeah, it turns green in May. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. it's uh, it's funny. I went I went up to my lot. I told my wife, I was like, man, I wonder if the grass is even, you know, because everything's starting to get green. So we went there this weekend, and and I was like, oh, it's not growing yet, you know. And I'm like, oh, I'm gonna knock all those trees down anyway. Uh, hopefully they won't say. I had to go up there every two weeks during the summer and uh, keep the lot, you know, cleaned up and, you know, yep. being, ni uh, being nice, the HOA and stuff. So, uh, but uh, it's coming in, uh, hey. in March. It's going to, everything's going to start cleaning. And then, and then that pollen comes. Oh my God. Hey. It's just, you know, just covered with the green. Now, are you in the pine trees or the hardwoods? Where are you at? Uh, I've, I've got I've got both on my okay. lot, uh, a lot of pine trees, but I got some big, big trees have gone through a lot of storms. And uh, we're actually uh, we have a wood guy that's going to come in and whatever wood that he can use to reuse for he, he's a furniture yeah. mill yep. guy. He's going to use it and and the rest of it will, uh, you know, will get mulched in in the, in the shredder and then they'll they'll do something with it. You know, I'm trying to be as green as possible. Okay. Uh, that's good. Know, yeah, that's absolutely. Hey, and. Um, while you were talking about staying hydrated on the on the on the job site, um, one of the other companies I work with, um, this is not part of the Sire website, uh, web, but our, well, go ahead, um, you're good. So we make um, um, misting fans, and we use them in construction for a couple of different reasons. We use them for dust abatement, like you were talking about with your your scrap yards, but really for cooling um, the workers on the job site. So it it's a uh, it, it, the, the, you know, they're high velocity fans. They're connected to a high pressure pump that mists water out, and you get this cooling blast. Uh, if that's something you would be interested in for your webinar, I could get those guys to to pop on your line as well and give you a, a segment if you'd like. I listen. I entertain everything, you know, and yeah. uh, you know, listen. Anybody can keep you cool. Uh, yeah. whether it's, uh, uh, my wife got me a little, uh, a little running. I run every day, and yeah. and she got me the little thing to put around your neck. Yeah. Yep, and it's got the fan, and it's re, you know it's rechargeable, and uh, you'd be amazed at what just a little mist, a little, bit, yep. a little cool can keep. Because if you keep the back of your neck cool, you're yep. gonna your body's gonna be that much more uh, productive. So right. well, um, I'll share your information with uh with, with the uh, the air and water systems guys, and see if you can work something out with them. Absolutely, it could be me. I don't know. You never know with that. Hey, listen, you come back on again. We'd love to have you, you know, and yeah, sure. uh, hey, you're George, you know, buzz, buzz, Georgia Tech. Come on, That's you know, right. I got to get down there. All right, man. So cool. everybody. So I was going to say uh, everybody out there, listen, uh, you know, spring coming, depending on where you are in the country and, uh, you know, enjoy the rest of the week and, you know, have fun out there. You know, bottom line is, uh, you know, construction. It, it, it's it, it's the it's the funnest thing I think I've ever you know look I I build something every month I'm a builder I build a magazine I used to do it with paper and ink now I do it digitally but I have fun I smile every day I don't surround myself with uh, negative people everything's about your mindset no matter what you do so there's eight billion people on the planet surround yourself with positive people don't the negative the negative guys get rid of them or get you know go find someone else because you're just gonna you're gonna be that much more productive and you're gonna have much more fun and smile it feels good to laugh and and all those things whether it's on zoom or in person or, or so forth so uh everyone have a great rest of the week john pleasure i look forward to meeting you you know you're almost like a philly guy you know and uh you don't oh, really yeah. have a plan you got the, 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 you know you, know, you know you, you started in philly you went south and you started south and went to this way yeah i still say water you know people are water. like water come on water 
Yeah, water. It's it, W A D E R. That's how you spell water. it, you know. <laughs> and uh, but everybody's like, where are you from? You're not from Boston. You're from New York. I'm I'm, I'm from Philly. You know. I'm down. I'll bring you a steak. Hey, where do you get your steaks from? Uh, Jim or Pat's. I like you know. I like White House in Atlantic City. If I was going to get a steak, you know. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, White well, House. Yeah, uh, the ones around here. Claymont steak yeah. makes pretty good steaks. Yeah, listen, you know, I and no I one knows what we're talking about now, unless you're from the area. You know, what, what yeah. are you like? Rib we're talking cheese steaks. That's what we're talking. We're talking cheese steaks. Steak. Yeah, I get cheese steaks. Get, yeah. The proper so, steak. Yeah. So everybody out there, listen, have a great rest of Q1, and before you know, it's going to be the holidays, and uh, you know, make the best use of time, and once again, be safe out there on the site. So, John, say goodbye from Delaware. Goodbye from Delaware. And I'm going to sign off from uh, uh, Sugar Hill, just below the Beaufort Dam by Lake Lanier, about uh, 25 miles north of uh, downtown ATL. And we will see you next time on another episode of Commercial Construction Coffee Talk. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I look forward to meeting you in person, okay? Thanks, sir. Look forward to meeting you too, Dave. All right. Bye. Sign off. We'll see you all next time. Ciao. Yeah.